So this is my living room area. This mirror is a Facebook Marketplace find. Um, one of those situations where you go to a storage unit and uh, pick it up right then and there. And this chair is from a client that I work with. Uh, it's called Sit On It. I did some staging for their showroom and this was one of the tossaways and it just looks great here. An issue I run into all the time, thanks to these great floor to ceiling windows, is that the sun actually bleaches all of my furniture. So that's another reason why I opted for neutrals, because if I've got these bold, beautiful colors, they're gonna go about five shades lighter within, frankly, a week. So I can get away with having a black fade to a gray or having a deeper brown fade to something like a camel. You need to have a pop of color. And in my situation, I love a lime green moment. So I have everything from live plants to moss balls to various decor items that kind of allow that little pop to happen so that it doesn't just become entirely muted and dull and boring because ain't nobody got time for that. I can't avoid talking about my pride and joy, and that is my striped Beetlejuice throne, is what I call it. Obviously, that turns into a focal point of the space, but it works and it's not too busy because, again, everything that surrounds it is a solid end table, a solid lamp, a solid couch, and the coffee table right in front of it. My favorite object in my living room is this baby head. <laughs> My green baby head. I love that it's green. Most statues are marble or white or black. It was <clears throat> 230 euros, but it's the thing that everybody notices when they come in here. And it's like those objects to me are more important than like a nice couch. I feel like I'm more interested in having like an interesting object in here that gets people talking rather than like a nice sofa that somebody can watch a movie on. So this is our living room. Uh, it's where we spend a lot of time relaxing in the space. Either watching TV, listening to records, having coffee in the morning. Um, it's a place where we both unwind at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. One of the big moments in this room is the giant bookshelf that has uh, all sorts of books, from art books to poetry, memoirs. Mm -hmm. We try to create little different scenarios within the entire bookshelf. So one section is all short stories. One is all zines that we've collected. Lots of artwork too. I think bookshelves can be used for so many different things. and. We actually have some pieces framed, hung on the wall, mm -hmm. uh, behind books. We have things balanced all over the place. In Norway, we have a saying that if there's a lot of space to go up, is is almost like open-mindedness and acceptance of others. And I kind of like that whole metaphor that if there is room above you, then there is more room for others as well. And I wanted to live in a space where I was reminded of that. My favorite part is the home library, the heart and soul of the apartments. I like that my home is a haven where I'm surrounded by things that have meaning to me, that have function, but also joy and history. If your room or every room in your home contains at least one thing that you really love, it just adds personality to a functional space. This was the main focal point of the apartment. This is the first thing that I started on that I wanted to decorate. The feel and the theme that I go for in my living room is more so boho, jungle, but a little bit of 90s. Like I kind of just want to feel comfortable. I was deciding between a purple wall or this dark forest green wall, which I've had in a previous apartment in the dark forest green one. So I knew that that would just set the tone for everything. And once I painted this wall and got everything up, I just wanted to add different elements that showed me whether it was artwork or whether it was objects or plants up top. This is from an artist um, named Pardon My Fro on Instagram. And this big piece behind me and the two little pieces, this is from an artist um, called Damo Inc on Instagram. I really wanted to have artwork that just screamed to my culture and represented me. I also wanted to have a different element in this space and that for me was this coffee table. I really love the organic shape of it and the espresso color. These pieces really vary in height so it kind of brings your eyes up and down which creates a nice wave 
And I also love that the candlestick holder has its own natural waves. So I don't know, for some reason, I felt like it really went well with the curve of the coffee table. And with the coasters, I am covering an unfortunate mistake that I made when I was painting my nails on my coffee table. I completely spilled acetone all over. So we just cover it with some pretty coasters and pretend like it doesn't exist. <laughs> This apartment has no overhead lighting aside from in the kitchen and the bathroom. So I do have my floor lamp, but I also wanted to add those sconces. These wall sconces are actually not hardwired. I just screw them into the wall. And because of that, I had to find battery powered light bulbs. So they are currently dead and they don't actually turn on, but when I charge them, they do produce light. So that's really nice for when I want to sit down and read a book. So I came into the space and saw the black and white checkered floors and loved them immediately. I'm a person that studied textile design in college, so I love to infuse pattern wherever I can. I tried to keep a similar theme in the living space as well, but I chose to go more of a animal print route. I went with a Dalmatian print rug and then decided to complement it with a zebra print pillow and different smaller artworks that had black and white natures to them, but maybe weren't so obviously a pattern. Um, one piece specifically is a drawing from my first apartment's view in New York. I thought that one was really great to give sort of a pattern because the city itself is filled with so many patterns. 